Hello, my name is Ruth Kelly. I am a leadership, executive, health and wellbeing coach. And I am delighted to be here to talk about resilience today. Everyone experiences bad things or knocks in life. Have you noticed how some are defeated by it, while others recover and are stronger for it? What is the difference? Resilience. Resilience is the ability to recover and to move forward after life-changing situations, such as trauma, tragedy, threats, adversity, or significant sources of stress, for example, problems within the family, relationship, finances, or work. People who are resilient experience the difficulties like everyone else, and once the initial pain or stress has passed, they do not just bounce back to where they were before, but they move forward in their lives with their new learning from their difficult situation. A resilient response to adversity will often involve emotional pain and it can be very tempting to anaesthetize this pain with food, alcohol or drugs. The pain may seem reduced in the short term but it will not go away with this approach. In fact, the use of these substances usually make the situation worse. We need to face our hurt head on, acknowledge it and deal with it, knowing that this can take time and the support of others. We can rise up from adversity. There are strategies that can help us navigate through tough times. Dr. Lucy Hone, a director of the New Zealand Institute of Wellbeing and Resilience, has developed the idea of the three secrets to resilience. The first secret is that people get that life is tough and that suffering is part of every human existence. Knowing this can stop you from feeling discriminated against and thinking, why me when the tough times come? Terrible things happen to everyone, and when they do, it is their time to sink or swim. We live in a world where social media demonstrates that perfect lives and happy times are the normal. But this is not real life. Everyone goes through tough times at some stage. So the first secret to resilience is knowing that life is tough and that suffering is part of every human existence. The second secret is that resilient people select carefully where they give their attention. They focus on the things that they can change and they accept the things that they cannot change. As humans, we are hardwired to notice negative emotions. This was very useful in the early days of human evolution, when we lived in the caves and had to hunt and gather, while protecting ourselves from other dangerous species. Our brains were on high alert for danger and we were in a permanent state of stress to protect and feed ourselves. In today's world, this wiring leaves us open to negativity and stress. Resilient people do not diminish the negative. They acknowledge it and accept it and then tune in to what is good. Switching the focus of your attention to include the good is shown by science to be very powerful. Five years ago, I lost half the hair on my head. I looked very strange indeed, because I had clumps of hair growing beside big bald patches. It was a horrible thing to happen, but it could have been worse. I decided to accept my situation, deal with the awkwardness and the embarrassment of it, and be grateful for the fact that I was not sick. I shaved the remaining hair from my head and I wore a wig. The wig looked great, but I found it really hot and itchy and very difficult to tolerate. So I only wore it when I had to look presentable. I did not let this get me down though. There were some very difficult days and very difficult times, but I didn't let it get to me. I am so very grateful that I had the resilience to accept what happened to me and to deal with it. 
I have undoubtedly grown stronger as a result of this unpleasant experience and I'm also very grateful that my hair is growing back today. In 2005, Dr. Martin Seligman from the University of Pennsylvania, who is known as the father of psychology, did a study where he asked people to write three good things that happened to them in each day over the course of six months. These did not need to be big things. It could be that someone said thank you, or that someone smiled at them as they walked down the street, or someone made them a nice meal. When they analysed the data, they found that the people involved in the study had higher levels of gratitude, higher levels of happiness, and less depression. Deliberately and intentionally tune in to what is good in your life. You can keep your own gratitude diary by writing three good things that happen to you in your day. Today, I am grateful that there was enough milk for my coffee this morning. I am grateful for the lovely dry walk I have just had. And I am grateful that I will finish preparing this presentation tonight. The third secret is to ask yourself, is what I am doing helping or harming me? By asking this, whether it's helping or harming you, it puts you back in the driver's seat. It gives you control over your decision making. For example, during the lockdown, when people were restricted at home, there was an increase in off-license sales and a corresponding increase in domestic violence. If before we turn to alcohol or other substances, we could ask ourselves, will this help or harm me? We might drink less and therefore there might be less problems out there. Another example may be that if we're trying to get a job done, but we are fed up at the desk and want to go outside, we can ask ourselves if that would help or harm us. On one hand, the fresh air and exercise could help our performance when we came back in. On the other hand, we might not come back in. So we need to answer the question honestly, is what I'm going to do helping or harming me? Practicing resilient thoughts and behaviors helps a person to become more aware of what is important in their life and to pursue what is good for their mental and physical well-being. Successful people are not people who have always been lucky and only had good things happen to them. They are people who have dealt with the knocks and have managed to learn and grow from them. They are resilient. A prime example of this would be Oprah Winfrey. She had a troubled past, including promiscuity, drugs, and a baby born when she was only 14. She was repeatedly molested by her cousin, her uncle, and a family friend. Yet Oprah went on to become one of the most powerful women in the media and a billionaire. Is that just luck? No, it is resilience in action. Resilience is not a trait that people either have or have not, but it is a skill that can be learned and developed by anyone. In summary, I have shared with you today Dr. Lucy Holmes' three secrets to resilience. You can claim them and develop them for yourself. The first one is know that life is tough and that suffering is part of every human existence. The second one Select carefully where you give your attention. Focus on the things that you can change and accept the things you cannot. The third one is, ask yourself, is what I am doing helping or harming me? Thank you for your attention.